Before we lay down any drums, I want to just talk to you a little bit about building a groove. Now, as we said before about the importance of choosing sounds, building a groove is also a really important thing. Um, and this tune being in 12-8, that means it's 12 eighth notes in a bar. One, two, three, four. Um, the tendency might be to, to overplay and overcomplicate things, um, maybe something like... I mean, it's fun to play and it sounds quite cool, but within the mix it's going to be far too busy. It's going to get in the way of all the percussion parts and, and just cause havoc really for mixing. So we want to break it down into its fundamental parts, the most important things that we're looking for from this groove. And I reckon the most important thing is going to be the downbeat on the kick drum on beats one and three, and the backbeat on the snare drum which goes on beats two and four. Um, and quite simply, if we were to put that in, the percussion would kind of help groove along, keep it, keep it all flowing. Um, and this would just play its part. So that's all we need, really. But to keep it flowing, to keep it grooving, we're going to add some eighth notes on the hi-hat as well. So. Something like that. Very simply, just like that. Um, to make it a little bit more groovy, to make it a little bit more interesting, we're going to add some, some ghost notes. And these are really, really quiet notes on the snare drum, played in all the gaps. So it keeps it flowing, helps it to move along. Um, and that would sound like this. And all the time, while I'm doing this, my basic groove is still there. So it's still one, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. It doesn't really matter too much what I play on the top because that is still there. Now, a really important thing when, when playing grooves is dynamics. And with dynamics, if I'm talking the MIDI world, I'm talking about velocity layers. Um, so you can see with the ghost notes, when I'm playing the ghost notes, my stick is really, really close to the drum, really low. And you're getting very low velocities there. As I put my stick up getting louder notes and if you if you don't have any dynamics in your groove it just sounds bad um, it would be something like this which is kind of it just doesn't really sit it doesn't flow if you compare it to this And so all you keyboard drummers out there as well, you might have to edit the velocities afterwards just to make it really flow, but really think about that because it's important to, to, to give this thing groove and feeling. Okay, so talking about groove, when we record drums or any other instrument, rather than recording just to a straight head click, uh, which can be pretty sterile and, and hard to, to get a musical feel from, we prefer to lay down percussion parts. And the way we do this is to use this little guy here, which is the Roland Handsonic 10, which is a really cool little device. Um, and we rigged that up with BFD percussion expansion pack. Um, and you can get some really great sounds. And just like the V drums, it's, it, it just feels like playing percussion. It's much better than recording percussion on a keyboard or anything like that. You get this, this really nice feel. Um, and one of the coolest things about it is it has a laser beam on it, which you can also rig up to trigger sample. Let's go and record some drums. <laughs> 